Welcome. Everything is fine. You're listening to Fork and Bullshit, the Good Place podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Vivian. And we'll be the architects of your journey into the afterlife. In this episode, we're going to give you a recap of what happened in season three, discuss our thoughts and feelings about the season, and then look ahead to season four. Previously on The Good Place Season 3, the four humans are sent back to Earth where Michael saves them from death. They each make an effort to become better people on their own, but they revert back to their old ways. Hey, Tahani Al-Jamil, who would you say is the most famous person in your phone? It's not about who you know. Enlightenment comes from within. The Dalai Lama texted me that. They reunite in Australia for an ethics study with a couple of additions, Simone and Trevor. Michael and Janet are exiled to Earth and discovered by the humans. They learn about the afterlife, which means they're now unable to earn points and they're doomed to go to the bad place again. So sorry for eternally dooming you. And that's our bad guys. They choose to help others get into the good place. They travel all over the globe to help those closest to them. Donkey Doug, Pillboy, Donna Shellstrop, even Camilla Aljamil. Michael accidentally lets it slip that Eleanor and Chidi were once in love. He shows Eleanor memories of their time together in the afterlife, and they argue over free will. You made choices I never saw coming. I call that free will. What if all your choices are predetermined? No, you've got to be kidding. Me. What? We don't know. Maybe there's a mega demon who built a torture chamber for demons, and this whole thing is just him torturing you. Since they're the only truly free beings, Eleanor says they need to do something big. They choose to visit Doug Forsett, hoping he'll be a blueprint for all humanity. Turns out, he's a miserable guy who tries to make everyone else happy at his own expense. Sean and the demons make a portal to Earth and find the humans. A fight ensues! Janet kicks Demon Ash, and Eleanor confesses her feelings to Chidi. And there's a real possibility that I'm in love with you again. Here, on this plane of existence, uh, today. Now, in Canada, during this brawl with demons. Janet takes them into her void, where all the humans take on her likeness. During a visit to the accounting department, Michael and Janet find out that no one has made it into the good place for 521 years. Chidi admits he has feelings for Eleanor, and Jason discovers that he and Janet were married in a previous reboot. TV, play cartoons for Jason. Oh my, Janet has a crush on you. At a post office in The Good Place, Michael calls the committee to tell them about the point tampering. They're completely ineffective, and when Michael realizes the real reason no one is being sent to The Good Place, he calls for a meeting with the judge. The bad place isn't tampering with points, they don't have to. Because every day the world gets a little more complicated, and being a good person gets a little harder. The judge, Sean, and Michael agree to revisit the neighborhood experiment with four new humans, chosen by the bad place. The experiment begins with Eleanor posing as the architect. The team quickly realizes Sean chose subjects that would torture them. Chidi's ex-girlfriend, Simone, shows up as a subject. Chidi realizes he must have his memory wiped, otherwise he will contaminate the experiment. Eleanor and Chidi have a tearful goodbye. I wish we had more time together. Time means nothing. Jeremy, bear me, baby. We'll just we'll get through this, and then you and I can chill out in the dot of the eye forever. And the next day, she welcomes a rebooted Chidi into the afterlife. Okay, and that was season three. That was season three. <laughs> so a lot happens. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly dive into my thoughts on season three. Mm-hmm. I found that the scope is a lot larger compared to season one and two, but at the same time, it felt smaller. Okay, what do you mean by scope? So, geographically speaking. (laughs) We're in Australia, so that's bigger. (laughs) Well, season three happens in like a bunch of different countries around the world. That's true. Australia, Hungary, United States, Canada, the afterlife, the good place. IHOP. IHOP. Bad place. Yeah. All sorts of different locations compared to season one, which was the bad place. So it's a large endeavor, geographically speaking. And to me, this season doesn't feel big. And I think it's because uh, it feels so episodic in nature. 
So each episode is so, structurally speaking, they're very singular. And it feels disjointed to me. Each episode is very important in the fact that it moves the story along. So just like season one and two, they're very, you know, it, every episode contributes to the flow very well. Like, yeah. No episode feels like, well, this was unnecessary. Right. But at the same time, you can sort of pinpoint each individual episode, right? Absolutely. A lot more than you can in season one and two. Mm-hmm. So each episode almost feels like not monster of the week, but conflict of the week. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So every episode is its own little contained issue that we know is going to get resolved, which kind of bummed me out. Hmm. But um, as a viewer, it's hard to feel grounded uh, because we're not given a lot of time to absorb each of the issue because we know that there's only 22 minutes in each episode. And we know that by the end of the episode, most of the conflict is going to be resolved. Right. So we're jumping to Hungary to Mm -hmm. deal with Tahani and Camilla's issues. And that's only half of the episode. Yeah. The other half is Eleanor. Yeah, it's like 11 minutes. Of, right, so we have... <laughs> this giant history of these two sisters being pitted against each other. Exactly. And uh, we have Jason and Pillboy and his dad. Right, and Jason realizing his dad might not be <laughs> savable, mm-hmm. which is sad. We have Janet and her Janet's problem. Mm-hmm. At the same time, we have the accountant, the accounting department. Mm-hmm. So again, that's half of the episode and the other half of the episode. So again, 11 minutes <laughs> to resolve all these issues. Yep. I mean, if we want to get really down in the nitty gritty, Michael doesn't really resolve the accounting issue. He just steals a book and leaves. He discovers... Um... He discovers something. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't resolve the issue in that episode, but he discovers something. Right. And uh, we have Eleanor fixing Chidi's existential crisis in like, what, one sentence? <laughs> I mean, I feel like he was at the end of it with the whole chili thing. It wasn't going to go much further than that. <laughs> it's very true. Um, but that's my point. My yes. point is every episode is very mm-hmm. structurally contained. Yeah. Whereas season one is very much, it's almost movie-like. Like, each episode contributes to a continuous flow. They all flow into the other very organically. Right. And to me, that made season three feel a lot more like a TV show. Okay. Because they're all very episodic. Right. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Not entirely. Mm -hmm. It's just, it gives season three a such a different feeling than the other seasons right it also doesn't help that our four humans get rebooted again technically do they well at the end of season two they're not wiped but they don't have any of the memories of season one and the culmination of season two yeah like they were obviously rebooted 821 times Mm -hmm. or 804 times or (laughs) 800 (laughs) they were rebooted 800 plus times um so again, we get none of the characters that we've grown to love. Like none of their personalities are the same because they haven't had time to grow yet. So we have that big time jump in the beginning of season three. Mm-hmm. Months go by, a year goes by that we don't get to see. Yeah, I can see the flip side of that though because we've already had, like, we've already had their character development. Right, so absolutely. we're assuming that it's happening exactly. at pretty it's much. Exactly, it's going to happen at the same pace. Everything's going to yeah. be fairly similar. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense not to show it. Yeah. I don't know if you could pinpoint specific episodes in season one. Like, I know you could pinpoint specific moments. Yeah. Like the sinkhole, Mindy St. Clair. Mm -hmm. But Janet being plungered to death, whatever. (laughs) Janet being murdered. Eleanor revealing that she knows she's not supposed to be in the bad place. Yeah, so I can remember are, specific moments, but... Those are character moments. Yeah, but not, not episodes. Right. Right. Um, no, I, I can see what you mean. Like, just re-watching the season, it did feel pretty disjointed. Because, like, we start in a totally different place than we end up. Mm-hmm. Um, which is not similar at all to our other two seasons. I mean, yeah, a lot of twists. And 
This is pretty much their signature at this point. Lots of twists and turns. Um, and they don't really spend anywhere, spend too much time anywhere. You know, they move pretty quickly. But I still feel like all, even though it's disjointed, it just, it's outweighed to me by like how many risks they're willing to take. And just the story that just keeps like surprising me every episode. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a lot of fun. That's one thing that we've definitely like, that's one thing that you can absolutely expect. Mm hmm. When you watch The Good Place. Is that you don't know where it's going to go and you, you don't know what to expect. You can try to predict. Oh, go nuts. <laughs> you could just predict out your butt. But it's uh, it's going to flip you. Like, yeah. I had no idea that they were going to go with the rebooting Chidi. Like, wiping his memory. Nope, not That's a clue. That's totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. Even though they've wiped people a million times on this show. Yeah, and yet somehow Still. this is so much more impactful because... Of the four, he's the only one that's going to get wiped. Yeah. So he's going to wipe everyone. Mm. That sucks. <laughs> but he's going to remember pizza, so it's okay. Yeah. It's not I a mean, total loss. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so you're saying, like, you can remember specific moments in each episode. And I kind of agree with you about, like, we don't give things enough space to breathe. Like, Eleanor meeting her mom again now like seeing her seeing her as this stepmom who actually cares and who you know gets tired after one glass of chardonnay and <laughs> goes to restorative yoga with all the other pta moms like yeah. this is not the person she knew before and we get her at the end of the episode talking to michael and saying yeah i mean it's great that she's a better person but that doesn't make up for everything that happened with me and it doesn't resolve all the conflict and the sadness that I feel about the relationship we never had and I don't know like there's just there's no time there's no time to do that because we're not really doing internal work this season mm -hmm. as much as we're doing like this whole external thing right? right like season one started with this very internal problem of like how do I become a better person and yeah that was fueled by the external problem of I'm in the good place and I'm not supposed to be here and they're gonna find out but it was a lot of like learning to become a better person and learning to um, to not be so selfish and not be this way and that way. And all of them at the end of that season finding out, OK, even though I tried to be good or even though I did good things, it doesn't matter. I still ended up here because of my intentions or the consequences of my actions. Mm -hmm. And in this season, it's such this huge external problem, right? It's like it becomes a global problem, not just honestly. A, yeah. yeah. It's a huge world problem. <laughs> it's literally finding out that you can't be an ethical consumer. Mm -hmm. Like, that you can't be ethical on planet Earth as it is now. And that is huge. That's a monumental problem. So it's like, we're just taking things from this very internal place. Where we're working on people's, you know issues and stuff and now we're going okay now we gotta work on the world's issues the problem is so much bigger than we initially thought the entire point system of the afterlife and we have a committee for all of this like it's so much bigger so i think that's part of the issue is like we try to still remain grounded with our four humans but we're really working towards how do we fix this giant problem mm -hmm. in our system that is dooming all of these people? Right. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a little less about, you know, Tani and Jason and Chidi and Eleanor than it was in season one. Yes. So if that was part of the draw for some of the viewers that initially loved the show, mm -hmm. then I can absolutely see why they'd be a little frustrated and maybe just annoyed that that's not the scope of the show anymore. Yeah, I get it because... I'm not there. I absolutely, <laughs> I really love how they've opened up the world and it's so exciting to see what they're going to do and mm -hmm. there's still the characters I love. It's just different. Yeah, it is a different <laughs> show at this point. Usually what I go to shows for are the characters. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I love the story and all this stuff, but I really love getting into the nitty gritty of characters. So when this first started, like this whole show first started, it was so exciting to see like just a person trying to become better mm -hmm. and someone risking everything for them. And that, I love that. So 
I've seen a lot of complaints about the end of season three that I was not aware of when it first ended. Um, But I've seen some complaints about it. But at the same time, it's like, it's this fun, huge problem now. But the way that the writers are doing this is they're still bringing it back to our characters, right? Like, when the beginning of the season finale starts, it's this huge, big problem of like, okay, how are we going to do this giant experiment? Blah, 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 blah. And then it becomes a Eleanor and Chidi problem, Mm -hmm. you know? So we focus in on our characters again. And we have that wonderful and completely heartbreaking scene with them. So it just refocuses, you know? You're talking about the retrospective Michael little video, (sighs) that little clip show he creates for them. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm doing a great thing for you guys. I hope you want to cry a lot before you say goodbye. (laughs) Well, he needs to give them a moment to grieve. I get that. Yes. Yes, I'm t- yeah, I'm talking about refocusing a little bit there. And that's part of what I like about season 3 is that we get like these giant problems, but at the same time we're still focusing on our characters. Like a lot of it doesn't have the time to breathe that maybe I'd like it to mm-hmm. have. Like if this was a show that had 22 episodes a season or it was a 44 minute show. Or... Yeah, something like that. Um where maybe you could have a little bit more time with Eleanor discovering her feelings for Chidi or Janet and Jason figuring their stuff Mm -hmm. out, Mm -hmm. all that, that would be nice. But at the same time, we've had those moments in earlier seasons. So it's like, I get that they don't want to retread the same path Mm -hmm. or whatever that expression is. (laughs) Retread the same water. I don't know. (laughs) Sure. Both. Yeah. So that is kind of my feelings about the season. It's, Mm -hmm. We're getting really big, we're getting external and global, but we're still able to like zero in on the characters that we love the most. Um, So I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So totally agree. You were saying that like each episode very much like if I told you the name of an episode, you know exactly what happened in it. For sure. So can you tell me what your favorite episode of the season is and what your least favorite episode is? If you can think of them. I can tell you what my least favorite episode title is, which is Cheaty Sees the Time Knife, (laughs) because not important whatsoever. Right, that's like a throwaway joke. Yeah. I guess I'd have two favorites. Okay. Um, I really like Pandemonium, Mm. the final episode of season three, because we're getting into the big conflict. Like, we've figured it out at the end of Cheaty Sees the Time Knife. We know that they're going to redo The Good Place. But we don't know the big conflict yet. We think that's going to be the conflict of, you know, oh, we have to prepare everything. But then suddenly the whole Chidi Simone issue. So that's kind of exciting to see everything get flipped. Mm -hmm. They think it's one thing and then they're like, oh, crap, we have to refocus and (laughs) do this. Another twist. Yeah. Another Michael Schur twist. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. For sure. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, I also really like Fractured Inheritance. I didn't initially when I watched it the first time because it felt so quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that was our episode title for that when we did uh, when we recorded that podcast, Rapid Reconciliation. Oh, yeah. Because it happened so quickly. Like, oh, how convenient. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it was also Eleanor's reconciliation with her mom. Yeah. But I really like them for the characters in it. Like, I like Eleanor's mom Mm -hmm. and I like Eleanor's mom's boyfriend. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah he's pretty funny i like seeing <laughs> what am i avril lavigne <laughs> he's such a dork i love it it's like i watch with the spikes on it but it's a little bit like Chidi and eleanor right like you get this person who used to be kind of a badass super selfish right right who is in love with this total dork right yeah just it's, this architect is yeah, just this, a nerd this this nerd who feels a little bit cooler being around her you know makes right. her Or makes him feel a little bit more fun. Mm -hmm. And I really like seeing Camilla. Like, Camilla and Tahani's relationship is great. Mm. And I absolutely would love to see more of that. Them butting heads and being (laughs) awful. And Camilla just coming up with the stupidest art show things, like, ever. Like, making making them omelets. You're so dumb. It's a commentary on subservience and... so dumb. You're so full of yourself. (laughs) And Tahani's just fed up with it but yeah i really do like those two episodes okay interesting we have completely different favorite episodes mine 
I have, I have two as well. Can I guess one of yours? Okay. I'm going to guess. You can't look at the notes. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not, not looking guessing. at the I'm looking at the episode titles. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing <laughs> like the worst. Like you're just looking at my I'm notes. I'm guessing the worst possible use of free will as one of them. No. 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 Okay. Okay. No, my favorites are Jeremy Bear Me. Really? Yeah. Because, because of Cheaty. I like seeing the way that they all react to finding out the truth. I think it's really interesting. I like, I mean, Cheaty's existential crisis is hilarious. It's so funny. I don't like, yes, okay, sure, topless Cheaty. But like, that's not even the highlight of the episode. (laughs) The highlight is just him walking around with like this just completely broken brain and all these jokes about oh here why don't you charge my credit card and then just keep it forever and do you have have a take a car leave a car and him yelling uh nietzsche to this guy in the park who's just trying to sell him drugs all of that is so funny the way he talks and that he's like you guys should just follow nihilism because the world is meaningless and it doesn't matter so just do whatever is so good it's Mm. just so funny and it really gave a chance for William Jackson Harper to like stretch those comedic muscles like Mm -hmm. he's always been really funny with his timing but it gave him so much more to do and then to get to see Eleanor fight against her natural instinct to just be awful and take this money from this wallet great you can see that she has made progress we see that she's learned over these giant time jumps at the beginning of the season and honestly tahani and jason's part was really great too like Mm -hmm. yeah you're right tahani didn't complain she wasn't saying this is unfair and i want to speak to the manager (laughs) she flipped it was like she just wanted to do something good for somebody out there and jason is such a kind dumb person (laughs) that he just thinks of the simplest sweetest way of doing it right Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. i really like that episode i really think it's a lot of fun it definitely has some really great moments yeah and they decide to become the soul squad at the end so that's true that's nice because we actually start our proper journey through the season i guess at that point yeah that episode has michael horribly using a keyboard (laughs) like (laughs) and then he wrote mikhail and Janet's face the entire time is just how you react. Well, someone older than you who doesn't use a computer struggles. Yeah, like my boss who didn't know how to open Gmail there you or go. another tab. She doesn't listen to this. It's fine. <laughs> um, and then my other favorite episode, and these are like tied, or maybe this one's higher up. I don't know. Janet. Definitely Janet's because I love seeing Darcy Carden play everybody. Mm -hmm. And the accounting department is so fun. I love Stephen Merchant so much. He's just fantastic. I don't know. There's just something about him that like I wish he could be part of season four. I don't think we'll see him. And it makes me sad. Mm -hmm. I want him to be like Michael's assistant. Like another Janet. That would be so fun. I just, I love Stephen Merchant. Stephen Merchant is really good. Corner piece. No. (laughs) (laughs) His cake. Seeing the neutral Janet. I love that episode. Plus, it's it's unique, right? Out of all the episodes in The Good Place, it's unique for what it did technically uh, and what it did with its actors. Like, it's just so different. Yeah. Well... It stands out from all of the seasons. If anyone's curious, my favorite line in the whole show is from the Janet's episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a random line that's your favorite. It's I love it. A- it's not even like... It's not a... A surprisingly astute moment from anyone. No, it's Chidi saying, I want to sit down. Where is down? And Jason saying, yo, I found it. It's up here and it's dope. (laughs) How did he get up there in the first place? (laughs) Just wandered off. (laughs) Just wandered off. Yeah, so that's my favorite line. Yeah. (laughs) That's uh, that's pretty great. <laughs> okay, so can you think of your least favorite episode? Don't let the good life pass you by. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the Doug episode. Mm. He's just such a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really that fun to see him suck so hard. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can see that. Plus, yeah, we get it. You're a hippie. You do your own things. You grow your own radishes. Like, you get beat up by, like... You literally eat just radishes and lentils, and yeah. you're very anemic, because of course you are. <laughs> this kid picks on you, and you just take it, and and then they go to the saloon, and I don't really like that. It's kind of boring. Right. They're not really doing a whole lot until the end of the episode, when Janet kicks everyone's ass. Yeah. Which is so, great. Yeah. So even then... Great moments in an episode that is kind of meh for you. I think mine might be The Ballad of Donkey Doug. Okay, I could see that. Because I don't really care about Donkey Doug. I don't care about him becoming a good person. Plus, it's just very unlikely that he would ever become a good enough person. I mean, he's Jason's dad. How old is he? He's awful. And if at this point he doesn't have points in the... In the black, I guess you would say. It's the red that's bad, right? When businesses are in the red, they're in the black. Yeah, that's a business thing, I guess. I don't know anything about business. But if his points aren't in the black at this point, then it's unlikely they ever will be. Mm -hmm. I just don't think there's a lot of hope there. Which, of course, they realize. And then they decide to move on to Pillboy. But Mm -hmm. I think it would have been better if we had just gone with Pillboy. Because I think... That the whole joke of Donkey Doug actually being Donkey Dad is kind of done at the beginning of the episode. Like, yeah. haha, it's a joke. Okay, we can't really carry that for a whole episode. I think it made more sense to keep Donkey Doug as kind of like a throwaway character. Yeah. Just bring him up every once in a while when you want to talk about Jason's dumb past. Yeah. At the same time, it does make a lot of sense for Jason as he is now, right? Oh, for sure. It gives us a better perspective because we never got to see his parents. And now we know it's pretty much just Donkey Dog. And we don't think that he was ever like, it doesn't seem like he had a mother around. Mm -hmm. So it explains some of Jason um, for sure. Yep. But even in that episode, I like what's going on in Australia when... (laughs) When Chidi is trying to break up with Simone and he doesn't know how, and they're going through the simulator. Hilarious. So funny. So funny to see him do that and to see Eleanor go in for him. And it's great. It's great. It's so good. Yeah. So still great moments, but overall, yeah, that's probably the one that's like, I don't care that much about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your most skippable episode. Yeah. So just kind of on that note with, Jason and his dad rewatching the season reminded me a lot of something that I've heard um, and kind of worked with in my line of work now doing kind of like social work stuff um, is something called ACEs, which is adverse childhood experiences, which is a term used to describe all types of abuse and neglect and other traumatic experiences that happen to people under the age of 18. And some of them are just like, your parents were divorced or your parent was incarcerated. Um, you know, your someone in your household tried to commit suicide. Someone in your household had um, battled addictions or substance use, that kind of stuff, right? And it just, it was interesting because all of this stuff can be linked to like physical health conditions and mental health and addictions, behavioral problems, social problems, all this kind of stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. it has all these moments have an effect on you in later later in life and it just made me think a lot about how it contextualizes some of Eleanor and Jason and Tahani's behavior and it made me realize we know like nothing about Chidi's family (laughs) we hear at the end of season three that his parents would go to symposiums and he would sneak into their office to go read the unabridged dictionary so it stands to reason that they were academics maybe Mm -hmm. something like that they were probably fairly smart people but we know almost nothing about them right and now that we know who donkey doug was and we know tahani's parents we know eleanor's parents and how all of them behaved we can see how it influenced all of them and i'm just very interested to see if chidi's parents influenced the way that he is now so i really hope that we get to see them in season four Mm. i wonder if that's going to be the case since Chidi kind of seems like the most normal of the bunch. And yeah. his only issue is indecisiveness. Well, it's this like even... overwhelming anxiety. Right. right. The anxiety coming from not knowing what the right 
thing to do is. Yeah, and the anxiety of how do I make choices in a world where it feels nearly impossible to make the right choice? And do you think that stems from the fact that he is a philosopher? Or did that desire to do what's right turn him into a philosopher? Well, he so says which is it? He says himself, actually, in the Janet's episode, that he went to philosophy to try to make sense of a world that never makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So I think for him, it was, he has this overwhelming anxiety about the world, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. So he goes to somewhere where he feels like he can find logic and right. reason and answers to his questions about how to live, mm -hmm. right? So then he sort of picks a philosopher that mm, is maybe the easiest for him to abide by and he just goes with mm -hmm. what that is right. so i'd just be interested to see if there's like something that kind of caused his anxiety just like as saying you know all of these types of adverse childhood experiences can link to like mental health mm -hmm. i wonder if that's something that happened with him I also thought of the aces because eleanor talks in the uh the worst possible use of free will episode she talks about how she has no agency because of genetics and environment and societal factors and all these things have determined her life and so really she can't choose anything she can't freely fall in love with anybody right mm -hmm. i don't know it's a really interesting line of thought right like free will versus determinism and how much about our lives is determined by all of these factors because a lot of people agree with that. It's not all like nature versus nurture. It's like, it's both, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't yeah. think there would be one specific thing that mm -hmm. guides who we are as a person. Yeah. And like we get to see with Tahani in A Fractured Inheritance, she was brought up pitted against her sister, always competing. Mm -hmm. But once she is able to step back and realize that, she has the free will to decide whether or not she's going to try to make amends with her sister. It was set up for us to be against each other. It's not our fault. And we both have the ability to change that now. Mm -hmm. We're both adults. We can realize it. We can work through those, those issues and we can make a change. So I don't know. It's cool. It's mm -hmm. something that I really appreciate about this show. It's not something that you see all the time. Mm hmm yeah, it's not like these people are this specific way. Like, this is their personality. Just accept it. Mm -hmm. We don't have a reason. That's just, we needed this type of character. Yeah. And there's no, oh, well, Eleanor's parents were terrible and they neglected her. And, you know, dad was constantly committing crimes and used substances and all these things. So it's okay that she's the way that she is. And it's excusable that she right. behaves the way that she does. No, it's okay. Yeah, you had a really tough childhood. You need to reckon with that and you need to make changes. And I like that. I like that there's no scapegoat. You have control over your life and how much you're going to change. Yep. I like that. Free will, man. <laughs> Free will. <laughs> Double edged sword. Mm hmm. Hard but necessary. So we already talked a little bit in the previous episodes about this season that there wasn't a whole lot of like explicit philosophy. We didn't have lessons about philosophy every single episode from Chidi. It wasn't classroom style. Right. But I think the overall philosophy for this season was free will versus determinism, which is why we called it out so explicitly mm -hmm. and kind of dealt with it in that episode because that's a big part of like the end of the season too, finding out that there's not really a way to be an ethical person on earth because of globalization and capitalism the way everything is structured yeah so part of it is yes every person has a free will on earth and you know this doug guy was able to buy flowers for his grandmother but so much of the consequences for that were determined for him without his own will mm -hmm. on that like he wasn't able to determine the fact that uh the cell phone was made in a sweatshop and that these roses were had a giant carbon footprint and all of this stuff it was determined for him mm -hmm. um so he had no real choice in the matter not as much choice as there could be and then when jason talks about this guy who was in his dance group and how he had to work three jobs and take care of his grandparents like we see that it's harder for people who are living in poverty or who are in really difficult life situations it's so much harder for them to 
make those choices, like yeah, make they those might ethical not be able choices. To it. Exactly. It's actually expensive to be <laughs> to be ethical, which sucks, right? Like to buy something that is cheaply made uh, versus to buy something that, yes, will last you a long time and was made by someone maybe in the same country as you, made locally, blah, blah, blah. It's going to cost you a lot more money. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. And it's tough when you can just, yeah, you can go ahead and criticize people for not using metal straws, whatever, those kinds of things. But depending on that person's life circumstances, they might just not have that choice. And it stinks for them to have a lot of this stuff for them predetermined, right? Like, they just don't have the freedom. Right. And to... that dooms them to a an eternity of the bad place. Right. I mean, we're all doomed as far as this show goes. It's been 521 <laughs> years since anyone got in. But it's just interesting. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's part a big part of the show's philosophy this season. And in case anybody missed it, I mean, there's also... Episode 8, which is the worst possible use of free will. Yeah. So just to nail home that theme, (laughs) that's what Eleanor learns. Yeah, exactly. And Michael saying at the end, too, like, we just need to act like there is. Mm -hmm. We just need to believe that there is free will because otherwise, what is the point of everything? And that's what they're doing, right? Like, they're, they're facing this system that has been so difficult and has doomed people. And it's just kind of, like, relentlessly awful to them. (laughs) And they're just trying their best. Mm-hmm. It's a tough battle, but it's a battle worth fighting. And I think that's that's where a lot of it lands for me is like, it's hard, but it's worth fighting for this. Yeah. <laughs> just to get serious just on you there. Just to get a little heavy. <laughs> okay. So how about we talk a little bit about our hopes for season four, which is starting this Thursday. So exciting. Yeah. Or if you're listening to this in the future. You've it's, already seen season four. Oh my god! Tell us how it went. Yeah, Let us email know. us now. Send us an email, <laughs> and we'll. Because uh... <laughs> time means nothing, Jeremy. Bear me, baby. Jeremy, bear me, baby. Oh. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen to cheating Eleanor after the literally devastating end of season three? <laughs> so <part laughs> I of cried me... <laughs> so much rewatching it, like so much, <laughs> just crying. <laughs> okay, awful. so in anticipation of Michael Sher. Okay. <laughs> Doing what he does. I anticipate this whole cheaty mind wipe situation will be resolved in less than three episodes. Wow, that's quick. Something's going to happen that's going to completely flip everything on its head. I don't know what it is. Okay. But I don't think the whole season is going to be revolving around Cheaty trying to get his, or them trying to get Cheaty's memory back. I've actually heard some interesting theories because like you're saying you think it's going to get resolved in three episodes. I read some stuff online that people were saying Cheaty, like the Cheaty we see at the end of the episode might be like a Janet baby. Ooh. Like maybe she's leveled up enough that she can make. A duplicate. Yeah. Uh, and Cheaty's hiding Chidi in the closet somewhere. Double, like a copy of Cheaty. And then the real Cheaty is being hidden somewhere. Just to dupe Sean. I mean, that's not against the rules. No. That and, wasn't explicitly stated. And that way it would allow for Chidi not to lose his memories and all these kind of things. But I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting theory. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, that would certainly change things. I mean, it would make the end of season three a lot less devastating. Yeah. That's an interesting theory. Okay. So you think it's not going to take all season long? No. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't even think this whole experiment in the medium place is going to take the whole season. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I I... think (laughs) they're going to some, I mean, we've had so many mind, uh, we've had so many time jumps that I think they might jump a bunch of times, like skip ahead a few months, see how the humans are doing in the experiment, skip a few months, something's going to happen and Sean is going to hate this whole experiment and just. I don't know. I think something weird and bizarre is going to happen. I don't think we are going to have the same feeling as we did in season one. Season one was very much set in a good place. Quote unquote, you can't see my quotes, but they're quoting. (laughs) My fingers are doing little quotes. They are, they are. I vouch for you. They're bouncing up and down. (laughs) Um, But season one was all in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Season four is not going to be all in the neighborhood. I don't know. I I kind of think that it is. Just full circle? 
I, yeah, I kind of think that's what we're doing. We're going full circle and we're really going to like focus a lot more on how do these people become better people when it's not. We still have the seen... ones that we care about. I don't yeah. know. It's very different. There's still two other people that we have to meet. Yeah. And we have well, this guy. Or one. And we have this guy, John, who's like pretty much just explicitly awful. And I don't think he thinks he's in the wrong place. That's he doesn't the thing. seem to think he is. So there's not that panic that Eleanor had. Plus, Simone is already a good person. Like, she doesn't have the decision-making issues that Chidi did, right? And he was definitely, like, the quote-unquote best person right. in season one. So, in in order for this to work, somebody has to think they need to get better. Mm-hmm. So, it's not going to be... Well, it's unlikely that it's going to be John. It's unlikely it's going to be John. It's unlikely it's going to be Simone. It's very unlikely it's going to be Chidi. So then will someone else have have to... Right. So is it going to be one more person or two more people? I'm not sure. Yeah, because we actually had a chance to watch the mini episodes, the webisodes, the selection, um, which if you can watch it, you should. It's really fun. It's all about Sean and the demons figuring out who they're going to um, select for the four humans to go into this experiment. And Sean talks about how Simone's going to be a great, um, a great person because it's going to mess Chidi up, right? So he's thinking about how that's going to affect Chidi, but now we've got a rebooty Chidi. So does that mean it's four humans plus Chidi or is Chidi going to be one of them because now he's the one to torture Eleanor? Mm -hmm. We don't know. I like that feeling of not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. And the show is very much like... It reminds me of how I felt when I was watching Lost. Okay. Very much cliffhangery at the end of each season, mm-hmm. not knowing where the heck they're going to go. I mean, the end of season one of Lost was a brutal cliffhanger, as well as season five. Season five finale just melted everyone's brains, and we could not wait until season six. Like, after Juliet hit that bomb. Nobody knew what the heck was going to happen. Spoilers for Lost, apparently. That wasn't a spoiler. The show is old. Sorry if you, if you haven't watched it. If you it. say it's a spoiler, then it becomes a spoiler. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything that happened after that. Okay, okay. But um, yep. it's just that that feeling of where are they going to go? What's going to happen? How are they going to resolve this? Because this is the final season. So, right, and we know now that season four is the final season. We didn't know that going into the end of season three. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of weight on this season to really resolve everything. And will it get resolved? Or will it be kind of like a Sopranos style finale where it just like... I didn't watch The Sopranos, but it better not be a Sopranos style ending. I do not want it to cut it to black. Or like things <laughs> just don't end and they just keep going. Like maybe they have to run another bunch of experiments with new people and michael realizes this is never going to end and yeah just i saw another popular theory online that maybe this season is them creating a purgatory like this experiment type place is going to continue forever allowing people to become better or not become better and then that will determine where they go right because maybe the way that the point system is set up or however it works, they're going to have to create a third place Mm -hmm. or a second, fourth place, fourth place, because there's already the medium place. Yeah. So just rezone the medium place. Rezone it. Yeah. Yeah. Into purgatory. Right. Right. I don't know. I think that could be interesting. That makes sense to me. Do you think that the experiment's going to work? This actual neighborhood experiment? Do you think people are going to get better? I don't think it's going to work. And I think it's because Sean is going to meddle. Hmm. And but the Michael's judge is already, also watching, The right? judge is watching, but Michael already screwed up. <sighs> and it, he screwed up before it even started. Yeah. Michael's the worst at pretty much anything. We've we've learned that throughout the years. This is very high stakes. You know what? I'd be very worried if I was Michael, too. I'm worried. This could be <laughs> happening right now. That's true. This could be going on in the afterlife. Yeah, Michael, get your shit together. <laughs> Our lives are at stake. <laughs> I want to go to the good place. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, are we making assumptions based on episode titles? Because I've only I only know the first episode title. I 
found the episode titles. I guess they are subject to change. Um, but I think that would be kind of fun to to just go through them and see. So our premiere is going to be called A Girl from Arizona. Um, the second episode, same thing. Going to be part one and two, though it doesn't appear that it will be a two-part season premiere. No, like, hour-long premiere, I guess. Right. So just to let you know, we found these episode titles on Reddit. They have been posted on some spoiler TV sites. We're not 100% sure that these are the confirmed titles. They're also listed on Google, so... But you know what? It's fun anyway. Sure. So we're going with that. There's one called Employee of the Bear Me, which I think could be really cool to like actually learn a little bit more about all this timeline stuff and maybe get to do some weird timeline stuff in this episode. I just think it'd be cool to do a little bit of time jumping, but in a fun way where like maybe we get almost a uh, memento style episode or something like that. Where Where things are happening out of order. Yeah, exactly. I think that could be fun. That'd be neat. So, and the fact that it's employee of the Mm army makes you kind of, Gives you the impression that it could be a office setting or yeah. a workplace. So it yeah. either could be the good place and there's people working behind the scenes or it could be another flashback thing. or Yeah, that we're getting deeper into the bureaucracy of the afterlife. Right. Yeah. Like maybe Michael was the employee of the, the bear me. Oh, <laughs> you never know. Um, I like the other title, Help is Other People. Uh, that should be episode seven. Because, of course, everybody has pointed out that the first season of The Good Place is very much like Sartre's No Exit, Mm -hmm. um, where he says hell is other people. So it's a little play on that. Yeah, yeah. A Chip Driver driver Mystery is episode six, and that airs on Halloween. Mm. Um, Kind of, I mean, that could have to do with golf. Chip driver? Yeah, there's a driver is a type of club, and so is it doing a chip. So oh. it could be something to do with golf, I was or it could be like a chip truck. <laughs> Absolutely, it could be something to do with that. Okay. Um, and also fries in England or chips. So maybe it's something about Tahani. <laughs> <laughs> could be fun. <laughs> um, I like the funeral to end all funerals. Should be interesting. I mean, we've definitely seen funerals on this show before. It should be different. Yeah. Is one of our main characters going to die? <laughs> I don't think so. They've already I, died. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I. It would just be... Maybe it's Derek. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be the funeral to end all funerals, sure. <laughs> um, the one that intrigues me the most, actually, is the answer. Because Eleanor, at the end of season three, asks... Janet for the answer to everything, mm-hmm. to all of life. And the answer is Chidi. That's what it is. That's where Chidi comes back into her life. Mm. Episode nine. Oh, wow. So it's a little bit farther ahead than I anticipated. <laughs> sure, but... sure, sure. We have the scripts. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the one that, uh, that interests me the most. I think that might be a twisty episode. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah. But. Yeah, you can check out Reddit if you want to, to see the episode titles. I'm just really excited for the season, you guys. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, and we're looking forward to talking about it and discussing it and answering any of your questions you may have. And on that note, I think that would be a good time to wrap everything up. Mm -hmm. And season four, the final season, brace yourself, everybody. It premieres Thursday, September 26th at 9, 8 central on NBC. We'll have a review of the first episode about a week after it airs. Usually we aim to get it out the Tuesday, uh, a couple days before, so you guys have time to permeate our thoughts and your own thoughts. Permeate our thoughts? Yeah, you know, just Percolate? A, we could percolate and permeate, you know? <laughs> percolate is bubbly, permeate is rotatey. Sure. <laughs> um, but feel free to send us your thoughts and questions once you've watched the episode. We're going to be eager to dive into it head first. Heck yeah. Okay, so that brings us to the end of Forking Bullshit, a multiverse radio production. If you like this show, please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. This is absolutely the best way for other people to find the show. 
And you know, another great way is just to like share it. Just share it on social media, wherever you are. Do that thing. Tell friends about it. You know, people who watch The Good Place, tell them to listen to our podcast. And if people aren't watching The Good Place, tell them sit to watch them down the damn and good place. tell them to watch The Good Place. Yeah. So if you want to get in touch with us, we're on Twitter at Multiverse Radio. You can tag your thoughts with F Bullshirt. We're also on Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can always email us from our website, multiverseradio.ca. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. And this was Fork and Bullshirt. Bullshirt.